Hi, and welcome to Now You're Cooking. My name's Mike Fear, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our uh, cooking live tonight. <laughs> we have Arden and Susan here, and they're going to Hi. be cooking a chocolate caramel matzo <laughs> treat. Um, before we get going on that, I just want to point out that next week, uh, Louise is going to be back. I don't know where she is tonight. <laughs> she's going to be back, and she's going to be demonstrating Vareniki, which is a Ukrainian pierogi type of thing. And so she's going to be doing it. And that leads into a weekend where we're going to be donating 10% of our sales to a um, Ukraine help fund. It's the uh, uh, United Help Ukraine. So we're going to be sending money that will help feed people and care for people who either are wounded or have lost some family members. So a very important thing, we like to try to make sure that we're helping out people who are less fortunate than we are. So, um, but without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Susan Horowitz and um, her assistant, Arden. My and, able assistant. Uh, <laughs> they, they are going to, um, uh, maybe Arden is, uh, is the main one and you're her, you're her I, assistant. I could, it could go either way. But <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't know yet. Here we'll see we what go. happens. Hi, hi everybody. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, make a Passover treat. This eight day um, starting <laughs> last Friday is Passover and it goes for eight days. And um, I'm making a special Passover treat that um, I love to make and everybody loves to eat. So um, it uses matzah as the base and matzah is a, also known as the bread of affliction that we eat all week during Passover. I'll talk more about that later. And um, this is a way to make it not taste so much like matzah. No offense to those of you that love matzah. I know some people love it. I'm, I don't love it, but this is a way that you can love it. So um, it's, called, it's, it's called different things, but it's basically a, a toffee with matzah as the base. So it's super, super easy to make. You only need a few things and you can really like customize it to your own um, likes and dislikes. So um, I'm just going to get started and show you guys uh, how to make it. So first, you got to get a box of matzah. Although if it's not Passover, you can, uh, many of you may have seen this with saltines as the base. I saw a little cooking video the other day where somebody used um, pretzel logs on the tray and then put all the stuff on top. That would also be fantastic. Um, so the first thing you have to do is get a baking sheet. It has to have sides. Do not do it if it doesn't have sides. You'll have a huge mess. Um, and then you can cover your baking sheet with foil if your parchment paper doesn't completely cover the sheet, but this does. So I am going to cover the, oh, okay, I'm going to cover the, um, oh, yep, I'm going to cover the baking sheet completely with parchment. Is that, did I do that right? No, I did not. <laughs> no, I think I did it wrong. <laughs> Operator error. No. Um, <laughs> no blade. <laughs> anyway. This is what you have an assistant There's for. no blade on it. There's another box. <laughs> or scissors. That's why. Or a knife. That's why. Anyway. Or I could just tear it or cut it with tear, a scissor. Tear, tear. All right. Anyway, you're going to. Look at that. You're going to tear off your parchment. You want it to completely cover the baking sheet because this is a toffee and it will stick like crazy. And I, I think you'll just have to throw out the sheet after if you don't. So just make sure it's in there. It doesn't have to look good. All right, so this is the most complicated part for me is you have your square matzas and you wanna make them fit in here as, as much as possible. So usually I take the sheets, they usually have one darker side. It doesn't make a difference which side is up and down. And then I just fit it like kind of like a puzzle. And it does slide around, it does move around, and it won't sit the way you want it. And that's just the way it is. And it's fine because it gets covered with melted butter and sugar, so don't worry about it too much. See? Didn't break evenly, doesn't matter. So then I do this. It's also a good way to use up the matzo. Alright, so. Again, it, like, it doesn't matter if it breaks unevenly, breaks evenly, it's gonna be covered. So, 
just want to kind of fill up the pan. <laughs> All right. And if you're very compulsive, I feel sorry for you because this is going to make you crazy. But I'm not compulsive, so it's fine. <laughs> And if you really it wanna... makes me crazy. Okay, so Arden's having issues with it. I am not. All right. So the next thing you're going to do is just set that aside, right there. And I need the next thing you need is brown sugar, and butter, and a saucepan. Oh, front. All right. And this is just like if you're somebody who knows how to make candy. <clears throat> I'm sure you're accustomed to like cooking the, sh the sugar mixture, the butter and the sugar mixture to a certain temperature. This is like not that complicated. You put the butter in, so it's two sticks of butter. This is salted butter. If it's unsalted butter, you're gonna also wanna add a little salt. So it's two sticks of butter and <clears throat> a cup of brown sugar and the recipe says, and it's really, it comes out every time, no matter what, it comes out right. You put in the cup of brown sugar, the two sticks of butter, and you bring it to a boil. And when it, excuse me, when it boils, you boil it for three minutes. Like, I don't know what temperature that is. If you have a candy thermometer, you can check if you're curious. I don't really care. And so you just melt all this together in the pan. Let me see how high the heat is. It's pretty high. And you just want to make sure you're stirring it the whole time because you don't want it to scorch. Um, yeah, I can be your stirrer while you explain. Okay, here, wait. Okay, okay, we're, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I have to, you have to go behind me. Okay. I'm tangling up. <laughs> it's a little dance we're doing. So you just keep stirring it. Try to make sure the butter's like touching the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I could have melted the butter first. So you stir that up. And oh, I knew this was going to take a long time. You stir it till it, it melts and then you let it boil for three minutes. But now I feel bad because you're going to stand here. You're going to sit there watching us watch it melt. <laughs> um, <laughs> Unless you want to hear about. Oh, perhaps a moment to talk about wine. <laughs> wine for Passover. Yeah. Um, you can drink any wine any time of year, but this is kosher wine. It is a Malbec. And it's an oh, awesome Malbec, yeah. um, but it is kosher. So if you are ever looking for a kosher wine, we carry this. And uh, is it better than Manischewitz? Um, <laughs> that's a you know. I hate to say that I would drink the Malbec. Um, maybe I would cook with the Manischewitz. I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, I'm but not if a fan. you do, if you are looking for a kosher wine, this one we're going to keep on the shelf. Okay. It's just uh, it, we we like it. Uh, <laughs> So. Okay, well that's yeah. good. It's nice actually, I mean Manischewitz is traditional. I'm not a huge fan. I'd prefer to just drink grape juice, but um, it's nice to have some finer options if you're a person who actually enjoys wine, which I am not a person who enjoys wine. <laughs> so I probably couldn't tell the difference between Personally, a I really enjoy grape juice. <laughs> there. So okay, yeah, you can see it's starting, it's melting well. We got these two little sticks left and over. And actually, once it's melted, it boils really quickly. And then we just time it for three minutes. Um, I can show you um, some of the options. So once it's melted, which it will be very soon, so we can we're gonna see it's we're gonna pour it on top of this and spread it out. And then um, you have that's this is the only part of the recipe that's like you do this and then you do that. So the rest of it is kind of like your chance to get creative. So. I really like nuts. Some people don't like nuts. Some people are allergic to nuts. Um, some people have specific nut preferences. I love pecans and I really like almonds and I didn't want to have to choose. So I'm going to do both on this. Um, Ooh, I think we're melted. Oh yeah, we are melted. Okay. And then yeah, it's melted and it's bubbling. So three minutes. I can do a timer on my phone for three minutes. Yeah, you, and you stir it constantly the whole time so it doesn't, come on phone. I just want, you know what, we're you not going to, you want to, not, I'm not going to click the it. clock button. We're not even going to go for three minutes. We'll just let you do that <laughs> for a minute until I'm done talking. So anyway, so nuts. I like these two kinds of nuts. If you do not like these nuts, 
Do not use these nuts. If you like macadamia nuts, if you like pecans, if you like walnuts, if you like pistachio nuts, if you don't like nuts, don't put nuts. I like nuts. So we're going to do nuts and then you need some chocolate. Again, I don't always like to choose what kind of chocolate. So I've got some Ghirardelli milk chocolate chips and I've also got some Ghirardelli dark chocolate chips and I'm going to do both because I can do that. You could use any kind of chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, regular plain old chips. You could do white chocolate. Um, it just allows a lot of customization. It's, it's, it's a fun thing to do. Um, something else I thought about is you can even, these would probably be good with some dried fruit, but you wouldn't put that on before you put it in the oven. You'd probably put it on after because it would get too hard, but you really could like fancy it up. Um, and really just anything you like is good. And um, my advice is to just have things chopped pretty small. Um, okay, so Arden has been skillfully stirring this beautiful mixture, and that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Bubbly and good, and I'm deciding that this is three minutes, so. Okay, minutes. you can just leave this spatula right there. <laughs> All right, that's long enough. Because once you cook it, it actually goes in the oven, so if it's not quite three minutes, that's okay. All right, the next step is I'm going to stir it up and then it's going to get poured on top of the uh, matzah pieces. And this is like possibly the only hazardous part because it's very hot and you just have to make sure you have a good grip on your pot and there's not a dog standing under you, uh, which there is usually in my house. So, <laughs> And you just pour it all over like that. And this is why you have that beautiful parchment paper. It's going to save you on cleanup and heartache later. Scrape it all out. And then you want to make sure you get the matzah covered. I mean, you don't have to, um, again, drive yourself crazy with it, but because it's going to melt more and spread out more in the oven. S get it. See, if you if you don't cover that, that's just going to like get burnt in the oven. So I'm going to spread it out. Get it on all the bits. Move it around. <laughs> Come on now. All right, almost there. Just move it around till it's all covered up. I'm almost there. All right, I feel the pressure. You all are watching me do something boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, now I have my oven at 350. This is going to go in the oven for about 10 minutes. You, I don't know what temperature the recipe says, but I always just do it at 350. That seems to work. About eight to 10 minutes. It's not gonna look that much different. It's just gonna be bubbling all, all over. I will tell you that a lot of the recipes say to, that you put the nuts on top of the chocolate, but I like to put the nuts on top of the caramel mixture because, well, for a couple reasons. One is because they stick better because I don't like it when I eat a piece of matzo crunch and the nuts fall off the chocolate. It just bothers me. So if you put it on now, before you put it in the oven, it gets like baked in and then it sticks and they don't fall off. It doesn't fall off when you eat. And also nice and crunchy. very crunchy. Also, it toasts the nuts a little bit so you get more flavor. So as you can see, I like, really like a lot of nuts. So I'm putting a lot. And so the two reasons are it sticks and they taste better. That's just my opinion, but I'm actually right. So, okay. So I've got pecans and almonds. It's just going right on top. You don't have to, you know, measure. Just do it till it looks like you want it to look. <laughs> now, do you think that this is more or less nuts than the Great American Nut Pie? Oh my God, what is the Great American Nut Pie? You need to be on TikTok more. Oh, I don't know what the Great American Nut Pie is. I, I hope it's a good amount of nuts. So if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on TikTok. I've, I've never been on TikTok. I'm too old. Um, okay, so this is how it's going to look. You know, I did it this way. You could do it however you want. There's no wrong way to do this. So then this whole thing goes in the oven. Ah! Oh, there's an oven behind me. Okay. Yes, there's an oven right there. And then, oh, can I do a timer here? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. I'm going to do a timer on that because I don't want to forget that it's in there and burn it. So, okay, wait, no, no. I lock out. Oh, uh, they're, they're smarter timer. than me. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to do eight minutes. 
and that should be plenty. You just wanna check on it if your oven runs hot, you don't want it to, to brown too much. Okay, so while that's in the oven, I will take this time to tell you a little bit about Passover. Um, it's a, another Jewish holiday where we eat ceremonial foods, um, matzah being the, the most important one. Um, so thousands of years ago in Egypt, the Jews were slaves um, and the Pharaoh, I don't know how to tell this, but um, anyway, the Jews wanted to be freed, freed from slavery and they asked the Pharaoh to let them go and he didn't want to because they were doing all the work. Um, for those, those of you who think that the pyramids were made by aliens, this, this, is, this is the story for you? It may, yeah, that may also be true. I don't know, I wasn't there. But anyway, the story we tell is that Moses, um, who was the spokesperson for the Jews, came to the Pharaoh and said, if you don't let our people go, there's going to be plagues, and God is going to send plagues, and God sent ten plagues. And after each plague, the Pharaoh said, okay, you can go. And then he changed his mind. And finally, the final plague, which was the worst plague, was the death of all the firstborn children of Egypt, which was pretty horrendous. Um, Pharaoh said, you may leave Egypt. Um, the Jews were in a hurry because they knew he might change his mind. Everybody scooped up all their belongings. And the legend has it that any dough they had rising that you know for bread they were going to bake because they didn't have like you know bakeries to go to uh, they just grabbed it and went so when they baked it when they got out of egypt into the desert the dough had never had time to rise so it baked up into this very very flat plain dry cracker so mm, during the week of passover jews who observe passover which is not every Jew, but Jews who observe Passover do not eat foods with leavening. We don't eat bread, like yeasted bread. We also don't eat things like pasta that are made with wheat. Um, the interesting thing about matzah is matzah is actually made with flour, but it's special flour and it's been baked in a special way under the uh, observation of rabbis to make sure it ha doesn't have any time to rise. You have to bake it within 18 minutes. Um, which is a mystical number in Judaism. So it stays nice and flat. It is made with flour. It is not gluten-free. A lot of what we eat during Passover would be considered gluten-free because you can just avoid everything with gluten and then you're good. But if you're eating things that are made with matzah, not gluten-free. So they do sell um, in the grocery store, even at Shaw's, you can get a matzah, a gluten-free matzah style cracker, they call it. But so if you're gluten-free and you want to try this, you can, you can get yourself some gluten-free matzah. So the Jews um, left Egypt, were out in the desert, eating their matzah. <laughs> and um, then they had to wander for a really, really, really long time in the desert before they <laughs> were allowed to, um, it's a long story, so I'm just telling you a little bit. Um, they had to wander in the desert for 40 years, basically, um, till they were allowed to um, go to the promised land that God had promised them. And um, parenthetically, Moses didn't get to go, which is kind of a bummer. But um, so we eat the matzahs to remind us of our hasty uh, exit from Egypt. And we, we have a ceremonial meal called a Seder, where we eat a lot of... Um, foods that have significance uh, for the holiday, that represent different things about the holiday, represent the tears of being in bondage, the sweetness of freedom, um, there's greens for spring, things like that. I'm doing a very terrible job of explaining it. Matzo but ball soup. Matzo ball soup. Uh, is Cafelta a fish. This Were you told the story of my mom and the cafelta fish? Oh God, no. <laughs> my mom was asked to get cafelta fish for Seder. Um, and she was like, okay, I can get cafelta fish. fish? No, oh, okay. she at least knew that much, but like, oh people were like, okay, she was like, okay, what do I do with the cafelta fish? And they were like, I don't know, you prepare it. Uh, being very vague, so she was not given enough instructions, so she like decided to like cook the cafelta fish or something. Oh, it's And then cook. she cooked it, and then she mixed in some like herbs and spices, and then she had this cafelta fish and she put it out, and everyone like, was like, what the hell is this? And she was like, it's the cafelta fish. <laughs> and they were like, it is? And she was like, yeah. And they were like, you didn't just like take it out of the jar and put it yeah, there? Yeah, you can buy gefilte fish. They're like fish dumplings in a jar. Not my, also not my favorite part of the meal. But um, you can also make it from scratch, which I have not done. Um, okay. Yeah, she yeah. 
but compared it. <laughs> and then everyone was like, huh. It didn't this look. This is actually good kefalta yeah, fish. I've never had good kefalta fish before. It tasted better. Um, okay, so. I think we have the bread of affliction. I, I, yeah. Cast it, why is it called that? Oh, okay. The part that I, that I sort of skipped over a little. So the reason, the reason the holiday is called Passover in English, it's Pesach in Hebrew, is Passover is because the final plague that God um, brought down on the Egyptians was the, the death of the firstborn. And in order to keep the Hebrew people, the, the Hebrew slaves, from um, also being killed, because they obviously had firstborn children also, uh, they were instructed to paint, uh, I believe, lamb's blood on the doorposts of their house. So like paint the blood on, so the angel of death would know to pass over the house. Um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty dark story. <laughs> Um, if you've ever, yeah, as a lot of the, the biblical stories are, if you've ever watched uh, around, it's, you know, Passover and Easter are always right near each other. This year they overlapped along with Ramadan, which is, I think, only happens every 33 years, which is really interesting. But um, Ramadan Karim. Good for you. Oh, that was good. I take care of this. So, uh, oh, wow. Okay. So anyway, so um, where was I going with that? Uh, I have no idea what I was about to say. The three oh, overlap. yeah. Well, so Passover. Oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Probably mm -hmm. you were thinking about that we we see Passover when we watch the movie. Oh right, the Ten Commandments. That's what I want to talk that's, about. That's, that's all. Charlton Heston, <laughs> yep. Moses, the Ten Commandments, epic movie. Yep. Very old movie, very melodramatic. Well worth Little, watching. Some liberties with, you know, True. the facts, but well worth watching. And it's, you know, it's a pretty comprehensive telling of the story if you have about four hours to right. watch a movie. But, um, you know, it's, it's a good tradition every year. People watch it for Easter. People watch it for Passover. Um, there's the parting of the Red Sea. It's uh, got a cast of multitudes, lots of goats, sheep, oxen, I think. Um, so, you <laughs> Chariots. <laughs> yeah, there's chariots, there's Yul Brenner, uh, the Pharaoh, there's Charlton Heston, of course, there's, it's, it's an it's a epic movie. If you haven't watched it with your family, I recommend it. It's, right. it's a lot of fun. It does actually kind of explain the whole thing. So, um, better than I have just done. So, um, that has been in the oven almost long enough. Two seconds. Wow. Oh, wow. That's like really good. There we go. So I'm going to take it out now. Season. Woo! <laughs> All right. The next step is kind of fun. All right. All right. So again, you're going to have to do this super carefully. Hot pan with hot sugar on it. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oh, see how everything like soaks in around the nuts, keeps the nuts in one place. Oh, that is a beautiful thing. I'm going to put it over here. All right. All right, and I will whoop, turn that off. Okay, so now comes, I think, the fun part. I mean, it's all fun, but so. Is this my moment? Oh, here, you, wait, you do, we're gonna, no, you're gonna do sprinkles. Okay, so again, you do not have to pick just one kind of, you know, chocolate or whatever. And also, another thing I don't really measure I think I read somewhere you don't measure with a measuring cup, you measure chocolate with your heart. How much you need on there is up to you. You do not have to stick this back in the oven because the heat of this pan, which is really quite hot, is going to melt the chocolate. So I'm going to do like on the pecan half, I'm just dumping like a half a bag of chips because I used half a bag earlier. And Arden is putting a half a bag of milk chocolate on the almond side. And you just want to Sprinkle it evenly, but you're going to spread it out once it melts. Now that will melt all by itself. Now that's got to wait. Sprinkles have to wait a minute. It's not the sprinkles time. So this will sit here. If you're really in a hurry and you can't wait, you can, I'm tangled up. You can stick this back in the oven for like a minute, but it really, the heat coming off of this is going to melt it right away. And something that um, you can also do is if you do like to see the nuts, you could sprinkle more nuts on top. If people like to know what's, what's under there. 
Um, and then because I did the rainbow hamantashen for Purim last year, I felt that I needed to like rainbow this up a little bit. So we are going to add some colored sprinkles. Arden is going to be, uh, Arden is a certified sprinkle expert. <laughs> I am. Uh, yes, they are very skilled in the use of sprinkle. Sprinkles. I am a sprinkle master. If so you didn't know. <laughs> and so Arden will be adding the sprinkles. So you can already see the, you can tell when the chocolate's melting because it changes color. Um, and really, you can actually leave it like that. It kind of looks good too, but I'm just going to start spreading it because I don't want to wait. And, all right. You can see it's melting nicely. I'm a little. Anyone who's fasting for Ramadan right now, I'm sorry. This is this. Is oh, supposed to apologies, but you can eat soon. Sun's going down. <laughs> okay, so I'm spreading this out, and this would be a time you could also add, you know, if you wanted to add some white chips to make it look pretty. If you have, I don't know, some kind of weird colored chocolate, you could do that. This would be also the time if you wanted to try something like dried fruit. I would put it on top now when the chocolate is wet so it will stick. All right, you can see I did kind of go nuts with the nuts. So, <laughs> a little nuts, but I you know. I too much chocolate over there. Not well, there. I think, you know, it all evens out. It's fine. And, you know, this is going to firm up because we're going to actually stick it in the freezer because unless it's winter, this is just not going to set up on its own on your counter. So, all right, I'm calling that good. Now, Arden is going to. Um, and this is also, you know, you don't measure sprinkles with a measuring spoon. You measure them with your heart. I'm the sprinkle expert. Um, Wait, as you I'm may or may not know, okay. um, we're, we're sprinkles are made with cornstarch. Um, and then they're pushed really aggressively into shapes and then dyed different colors. Um, coming from the sprinkle expert. <laughs> so that's, that's how sprinkles are made. Um, when you're measuring sprinkles, you don't want to measure them all that, uh, you, you don't want to be forced with it. You want to let the <laughs> sprinkles be free, <laughs> coming from the sprinkle expert. Uh, they should be free, that's true. So as you're adding your sprinkles, don't be afraid to, you know, go a little wild. Mm -hmm. Let the sprinkles take over. That um, looks very good. And then you want to make sure that they're, they're like a little bit even, though it's not that bad, because they're not really adding any flavor, just aesthetic pleasing. Yeah. They just look pretty, which is important. <laughs> and it's important that they look pretty because pretty people eat this. <laughs> there we okay. go. So at this point, I've read a recipe for this that said, while it is warm, break it into serving sizes. And I was like, that is the stupidest instruction I've ever heard because you can't touch this. It's First of all, it's hot. And if you try to break it, the chocolate will get all over your hands, which isn't like it's not a tragedy, but it's kind of a mess. So what I do, and I don't, well, I, I had a, a freezer in my basement and I had, I cleaned off a shelf and I was able to just slide this whole thing into the freezer. You can also put it in the fridge if you have room in your fridge. I never have room in my fridge for something this big. Do you, if you don't have room, it's fine because no. I, I will, I will put it right here and look television. through the magic of television. Oh, would you look at that? I have a tray of matzo crunch from my freezer that I brought with different sprinkles than Arden's. And you can see it's very like sturdy. And what I'm gonna do now is break it up. And actually, I would, I actually need a cutting board. It's just easier to do. Oh, okay. Oh, nice big one. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, these are cold, the burners. So, uh, you could do this and just break it. I'm gonna see, depends how thick it is. I like, oh yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it will break, it's fine. I use a knife usually because I don't want to get my hands covered with chocolate. So you can see it sticks to the parchment, but it didn't stick to the pan. And then, oh, a beautiful gigantic knife. Um, if you're a person who likes things in very, very precise squares, I'm very sorry, because that is not gonna happen. <laughs> So now is I just gonna cut it up with kind of irregular pieces and it'll you know it'll break how it wants to break, although these are cutting pretty well. And then you just like put it on a platter, on a plate, on a serving plate, however you like to 
serve desserts. Oy. And also, like, you can do giant pieces, but you can also, you know, do smaller pieces. It's very, very sweet. Um, very rich, yet you could easily eat the whole tray. You have to really be careful. Um, oh, another thing that I thought would be good that I haven't done, but because it's so sweet, um, even with the salt and butter, so pretty sweet, if you have like some like sea salt or something like that, you know, like I know the salty sweet thing is, is a really good flavor combination is to sprinkle some sea salt on this. I think that would um, enhance it because it would take away from some of the sweetness. Oh, some Himalayan, perhaps some Himalayan pink sea salt. Yeah. Whoop. But here, Arden, why not, you want to get a little um, spatula? spatula and you can just put them, yeah, and put them right sure. on the plate. And that's the assistant is here. Yeah. And this will keep on your counter in your fridge if it lasts. I mean, it doesn't usually last, but you can keep this for days and days in a container. It's a lot like eating sort of like a regular English toffee Heath bar kind of experience. Um, it's delicious. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's a fun way <laughs> to eat matzah during the holiday. Um, oh yeah. There we go. All right, so I think that's This that, has yeah. been a fantastic demonstration. <laughs> I can't wait to try some. Um, <laughs> our camera woman is trying it. Oh, it's Louisa behind the camera. <laughs> Thank you so much for mm. watching. Uh, do come back next week uh, okay. where we will be having <laughs> the demonstration of Barbara Um Louisa will be showing you how to do that. And remember, next weekend, so you see the dates, uh, April 29th through May 1st, and 10% of our sales will be going to uh, United Help Ukraine. And so. Until that, we will wish you a pleasant week. And <laughs> happy Passover, happy, happy Ramadan, happy Easter. Happy All Passover. of it.